and welcome back to the Champion Draft Series recap for week seven. We're almost done with the regular season, still got one week left. I am joined again by Shadok. Shadok, how are you doing? Thanks for coming back. Yeah, doing pretty well, and thanks for having me back uh, for the week seven recap. Uh, really excited to go over this week of the CDS. Yeah, me as well. We have a very tight knit competition as we fight through our last week to solidify our top four players moving on into finals. Let's get right into it. So yes, we still have several competitors reaching out for that juicy final four spot, but not all of them are going to make it. Somebody is going to have to drop, and this last week is going to be the main deciding factor in how that happens. And here to break down what these players have to overcome or what might just lead to their downfall, we've got Shadux here for the breakdown. After Spid's victory over Yupcroc this week, the redeemable qualities have secured first and it'll be hard to fall out. But there are very few chance outcomes where a loss this coming week will result in her being stuck in a wildcard match for fourth. In the end, if that happens, she'll be up against either the Holy Heretics or Dali Brazil. So she'll still need to take this last week seriously. I'm feeling good. Momentum's high. After two recent losses, Dali Brazil is not dominating as much as they once were. A victory over Yupcroc would guarantee her safety, but Aikado is really going to be trying his best to make sure that doesn't happen and hoping to secure his own top score. Tentando a sorte para explicar no que te machucar tudo que eu fiz foi só melhor. Capital's crew of the Burning Dawn have been pushing their way up the leaderboards, but it's not sitting comfortably up there yet. Without a victory over the redeemable qualities, Yupcroc or the Holy Heretics could really rise up to steal a spot. Nossa! Yup, Croc is certainly feeling their latest loss and is really going to have to pull out a win this week or hope that the Holy Heretics lose their final match to have a comfortable spot in the finals. Yo, let's fucking go, dude. Oh my god. And finally, the Holy Heretics are not currently in the top four position, but that could still change last minute if she grabs a win and one of the top four players flops this upcoming week. Yes, let's go! Fuck yeah! <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it's a pretty cutthroat competition as these players are at each other's ankles trying to make sure that they are not the one that falls out. But speaking of cutthroat, we've got a cutthroat deck today by Absolution in this week's Deck Dives. Absolution has been itching for a chance to finally show off Samira in this tournament, and this week he got the chance to with Samira Kaisa really getting to show us this very interesting deck build that I really want to show to you right now. Shadox, what are any key features that you notice in this list? Yeah, so the first thing I notice is the Swing Glaive and the Payday, which generate the Lucky Finds, which are very good with Samira or Kaisa. Samira, because they're essentially zero cost spells that help progress her and give some good keywords or stats and then with kaisa keywords she loves keywords it generates keywords <laughs> <laughs> yeah and to go off of that shadox getting all of these lucky finds means you're always targeting some sort of unit and we've got the good old-fashioned grappling hook for a very cheap one-sided strike spell even kaisa's own second skin can help trigger this so there's a lot of ways to trigger this grappling hook and just remove some of those key units that you need to get off the board yeah and a great thing about this deck is it's got a really good number of one drops and two drops so it can really get i guess the aggro game plan going we've got Zerx zersai hatchling for the lurk and fearsome keyword and to push some damage as well as the Voidlings that are always with Kai'Sa. And Rune Squire is also another interesting card that's included because it generates those Blade Fragments that also give keywords and are cheap spells for Samira. Yeah, and we've mentioned in previous deck types how Rite of Negation can be a very important tool when you know what your opponent is bringing. Absolution recognizing that the Chrono Breaks from Puffball Panda's Echo Lists, as well as a potential champion strength with Elite Decks, could be the end of him. So being able to say, I've got four mana, you can't do your thing, pretty good for Absolution. 
But as always, this deck was not the only spicy list brought to the Champion Draft Series this week. If you want to see all the lists that every player brought, you can check the description below. There's a link there that will take you right to all of them. With only one week left of the regular season, our players find themselves running it back against the same opponents they faced week one. Will these teams find themselves repeating history? Or will new champs, new knowledge, and a thirst for revenge change the game? That's an excellent question, Seanux. And first, I want to dive into the match Demon Diff versus Made in Heaven. Now, in the draft, Absolution stole Tempo Mao's favorite champion, Jin, from him before Tempo even got a chance to make a pick. So, in return, Demon Diff decided to swipe the W away from Absolution. But now Absolution has Samira on his side, and he's confident off of this recent victory against Puffball Panda. So he might just have what it takes to bring it back and take the dub this time around. We'll have to see. The redeemable qualities are currently sitting at the very top of our leaderboard, but they have yet to beat a single Brazilian player in this series. And they're going to have to do that at the end of this week or risk throwing themselves to the wayside and losing this hard-earned top placement that they worked so hard last week to achieve. While Capitao did win their first go-around, it's all on the line for him as a loss here could mean potentially not making it to the finals, so he's going to have to watch out. Yep, Croc is still technically in our top four teams, but if they cannot get a win versus Dale Brazil this week, they will be the most vulnerable to their position being stolen. Mafraju had an easy time versus Aikido last time they went up against each other, but she has since lost her dominating presence over the series and has not yet faced Aikido backed against the wall. This game in particular could be for all the marbles. The Holy Heretics are going to have to defeat the Ramus Ranch Rangers if they are to even hope to make the final four, but Elzons and Nivea really knocked down Puff's roster a peg or two when they last squared off. Will the Bluebird be banned? Will Starspring actually show up? Does Puff have what it takes to keep the dream alive? Tune in tomorrow to find out for yourselves. Jin and Kennen were made in Heaven's first two picks this draft, but they've yet to put up incredible numbers. But this week, Absolution edited the list with several tech cards that allowed him to get a distinct advantage over Puff's Holy Heretics. Jenin finally gets its spotlight in this week's highlight. Absol's gonna bring out the Jin Cannon and we are going to throw down with good old Echo Schmill, my fave. Oof. Wow, this is actually really good hand. We're gonna drop leveled Echo right now. Got a good feeling about How do I play this turn out? I do my own stunts. I just take five at night. The Black Flaming Cannon makes sense now. They're going to start death marking if they have it. They're running two death marks in their deck list. Okay. Oh, that's so cool. Put them down to three. Sure. I can also find Chrono Break potentially with um, Time Trick. Unworthy soul, sure. And a mystic shot? Probably a mystic shot. Did, they, did she break this round? Yes, yeah, she did. She's gonna try to draw something good. I will draw my own good stuff. Okay. It's actually pretty good for us. You know, is so cool. I would really like to kill this mana soul student. This mana soul student is like the one thing that's burning me out. <laughs> Play it. This eye of the dragon. Now we know she can go for the predict here. I didn't want to let her get the what's it called off. I can't remember the name of the card. Oh, I'm gonna play out the clockling here. I will take a two mana chrono break. You know that that sounds really great to me. <laughs> okay. We coin into Jin. There's Jin. Jin is 11 out of 12, so Jin is actually going to be leveling here. Okay, so I guess we're just gonna cook real quick. The curtain rises. They cannot hide. Ultimate Tempest Strike! 
he levels off of this, but he's not going to deal four to the Nexus. He's only going to deal two to all stunned enemies. Honestly, if she did that preemptively to say, okay, you can deny this turn and then also, or nopify and then I'll do it again. That's crazy. Like that's, that's insane power gaming. So I got to give it to her. Jin Kennen is such a creative idea. Like, honestly, Absol, in my opinion, is crim criminally underrated as a deck builder. <laughs> or she's not on the Echo spell. Okay. Do I let this rock? I think we let this rock, gamers. I think we just pass. We just bank all of our mana here. Oh, she could have a two cost copy. She's out, she's on the two cost copy. From the augmented the uh the clock link. I have to go for it. I can't not go for the chrono break, I feel like, in this situation. Yeah, so that's oh. second card in hand, that's the knife. So I have to block that, block Your that, stun the echo. If she's on right of negation, I just have to try to Okay. A deck is kind of gassing out now, which is unfortunate, and Jin is about to deal four to our face every time he attacks. Pog. Oh, pra. Just get the one, the elusive one. For five. I think I just lose here. Yeah, I think I just, I believe I just lose here. At least I, like, even if I found quicksand. Oh my god, fucking Yasuo. Let's go, Jin Kennedy, baby! Oh. That is unfortunate. The joy, this pink ghost, I better see, I better see this on the spice of the week, okay? I don't care. I, you better give me the spice. You better give me the spice pick, because it finally did the thing. I finally did the thing. Yeah, while well, Jin Kennen might not be the most popular deck, or even in this series, the most successful deck, when it really does its thing and gets to just stun all the units and then kill them all with Jin's skill, boy, is that satisfying. But that's about all the time we have for today's Shadows. As always, here are the scores presented for your viewing uh, to basically reflect what we mentioned earlier in the previous story. We have a lot of players closely knit, really gunning to make sure that they keep that top four spot. But if you want to see how these players do in this final very important week, here are the match times for all of your viewings. Please pay attention to the dates as not all of them are on Monday this week. And yeah, that's about it. Shadux, thank you so much for joining me again. It's great to have you again on the show. Love having you. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, I, I just... I love it. I love going through all this. I love watching it all, and it's great, and I'm glad to be a part of it. Basically, I feel the same. So anyways, we will see you all next week. It's getting very close to the end of the series. I hope you all are enjoying it as much as we are, but until then, we're going to have to bid you all adieu.